guys, how's it going? So, I wanted to make a quick video about some not so good experiences I've had in the past couple of weeks. So, <clears throat> as you guys may know if you watch uh, quite a few of my videos, uh, I have mentioned, especially in the urticating hair videos, that I have extremely sensitive skin. That being said, it's my own stupidity for dealing with animals who have things that can really irritate skin just on its own. And knowing that I have really sensitive skin, I'm not expecting anybody to feel sympathy for me. Um, <clears throat> but I kind of wanted to share some of the things that have happened to me in the past couple of weeks because I've run into some bad luck with some hairs. So, first experience was, as I showed you guys in my last video, not the pumpkin patch one, but the other one, I'm pretty sure I showed you a quick glance of the large non Colorado Velosis that I had, who actually just molted. Um, anyway, she's uh, a pretty defensive, uh, a pretty defensive spider and, uh, she loves to kick hairs, which is unfortunate for me because the non genus seems to be one of the worst for me. I actually say that it's worse than Therifossa hairs, um, for me. Now, usually people would say Therifossa hairs are the worst, um, being that I had a Sturmy before, not that he really kicked hairs very much. Uh, I did get the ones, I did get a reaction from them, but not near as bad as I've experienced from the non-do hairs. Now that could just be because my stormy wasn't really that flicky and I just lucked out. I'm not saying that in general non-do hairs are worse or, you know what I mean, everybody reacts to things differently. Uh, I know somebody who never reacted to hairs, period, whether it be non-do, therapalsa, anything of the sort. She just was basically immune to it. Um, so everybody's different than that. Unfortunately for me, like I said before, non do hairs are one of the worst for me and I had two really bad experiences and they happened at the same time. So I went to deal with her in the bathtub, put her enclosure in the bathtub and she is one of the ones that I call uh, grounded to the tub. And what I mean by that is, I've never used that term in front of you guys, but I have specimens that I will only work with in an enclosed space, which is usually the bathtub, because of their behavior. And sometimes that can be they're either really skittish, uh, sometimes that can be because they love to come out on their own. Um, you know, it, usually with the old world, it's guaranteed just in case, because they're they can be very unpredictable. Uh, this one is grounded to the tub, so to speak, because uh, she loves to charge up my hands. Uh, she's very defensive. And it's just a little bit easier contained if she was to decide to come out at me that it's in a con contained space and not so she can have a uh, free roam of the bathroom. Uh, I, being that my smaller one, I actually had that experience where she got out and I was dealing with the, the little one that I had in the sink and she ended up getting out and all over the floor and it was just the huge epic ordeal that didn't need to be. So anyway, she's grounded the tub. I opened up her enclosure and she started kicking hairs like crazy. Uh, I felt them go into my nose, my nose started burning. I immediately, you know, her enclosure was in the tub. I didn't have anything in my hands. Uh, I immediately put her lid back on, um, went out to flush my eyes because unfortunately, this was actually during um, feeding, so I had a whole bunch of different other enclosures around the sink. And so I rushed out into the kitchen to start to flush my eyes out. And the second the water touched my eyes, it was like acid. It was one of the most painful experiences I've ever had. Um, basically I would say it was kind of like lighting all your eyelashes on fire and sticking them all in your eyes at once is basically what it felt like. Uh, it was extremely difficult not to scratch my eye, um, even opening my eye to try to flush it out. It was really, really difficult. It was painful, almost to the point of being in tears. Um, but anyway, in all this kerfluffle of this happening, uh, I also got her hairs on my stomach. And I'm not going to show you guys this rash strictly because I'm not comfortable with showing my body like that. Um, but... I've had this rash for almost three weeks now. Uh, it was all over my stomach and a, a bunch of different areas around my navel, uh, just everywhere. And um, even to this day, it's extremely itchy. It's extremely irritated. It's just an awful, awful experience. Uh, the other hearing experience I want to talk to you guys about because I wasn't the only one. Uh, I mentioned in the other video that my geniculata molted, my acanthus area geniculata. And uh, I went to give her a drink after she molted. I took out her molt and she paired me in the eye. Now this was a different day, like two weeks later. And I kind of sort of lucked out because she didn't actually get it in my eye. She got it around my eye. And I'm gonna try to insert some pictures here if I can't. Uh, I'll link my Instagram down below and you guys can check out pictures there because I did put one picture up. Uh, I don't think I have the proper lighting here to, to show you, but I'll try, pardon that. 
I, I have the worst lighting possible, but basically it's under here. You can see some discoloration. Let's see if I can get it a little bit better. It's healing up quite a bit, but it was all under here. Like I said, I've got pictures. And up here, and that's where it's got me. It's starting to actually heal up now. Um, I'm just going to do this. But, uh, <clears throat> like I said, if I can't get a picture into the video, that's like some godly light. Look at that. I'm sorry. Uh, but yes, I will try to... Really? I can't even set my camera up today. Okay. So, let me see if I can kind of block off that line a little bit with my giant ass head. Um... So yeah, if I can't get a picture in another video, I'll link my Instagram down below. Um, it coincides with my YouTube name, so if you guys just look up Tarantula Lover like it's spelled, uh, you will find my Instagram account. Uh, I have I do add pictures on there fairly regularly, so if you guys do want to see pictures, you just search Tarantula Lover and you will find it there. Uh, feel free to follow me. I will follow you back. I did make a video a while ago. Back then, my channel was Music Lover 420. I've since changed the name, so to coincide. It's the same thing. So, <clears throat> if you guys want to check that out, it's definitely there. Like I said, I'll link it down below. You just search Tarantula Lover with three R's and you'll find me on there. Um, if you guys want to check out other pictures. And like I said, if I can't get a picture in the video, I'll link that down below and you can see it there. Um, but, one of the downsides to keeping certain tarantulas is their hairs. And, unfortunately for me, it, it does really suck because, like I said, I do have really sensitive skin. And for the longest time, I've kind of had the notion of just, you know, like, whatever, I'll deal with it. But unfortunately, now it kind of comes down to the point where I'm wearing goggles, I'm wearing masks, uh, just to try to save some of my skin. Um, but getting it in your eyes and in different areas, let me tell you, is a really awful experience. And I really recommend, if you're going to deal with species that, that do have more serious hairs, that you do look into, whether it be masks, goggles, anything of the sort just to kind of save yourself from that. So I just kind of wanted to share those experiences with you guys. Uh, it really does suck. Um, you know, obviously flushing the area is a really, really good idea. Uh, and if you do actually get in your eye, please keep an eye. You, uh, I've heard of some people having to go to the doctor, the eye doctor, to get the hairs removed from their eyes. Luckily, I, it hasn't gotten that bad for me. But I feel sharing the experiences with you guys is something vital because it's something that if you're dealing with new worlds, it's, it's bound to happen at some point. So all I can really say in this is um, just remember that if it does happen, don't panic. Uh, make sure to flush the area. And just keep an eye on it to make sure that you don't get no infection. Uh, some people will take allergy medications to take the swelling and the ickiness down. It does help for some people. Uh, but, you know, just keep an eye on the area. If you start to notice that it's, it's extremely irritated, try not to itch too much. Um, but if you do notice that it's extremely irritated, I do suggest getting it checked out uh, just because you really don't want it to spread to, to an infection or anything of the sort. Uh, not that I really heard of that happening, but your skin can be a kind of funny thing. And when it's irritated with almost something like barbed wire, uh, you never know. And you'd much rather be safe than sorry. So <clears throat> just wanted to kind of share this with you guys. Um, and yeah, I guess I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you later. I'll get that godly light out of your guys' face. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Bye.